this tutorial is going to concentrate on the delay effects. The two delay units I use, and these are my two favorites, I don't really bother with anything else because these two cover every type of delay I need, and they've got extensive modulation routings as well. The matrix is lovely. The first one is Fab Filter Timeless, which is the one we're going to use because it's very simple to understand. And in the advanced sections, we'll get onto this one, which is the Echo Boys. It looks simple, and it actually it is, but because it has so many other areas that I'm sure you're going to want to look at and explore, it makes sense to just cover the easiest and the basics first. Okay, let's start with Timeless, and I want to explain to you from left to right what all these functions are. But for now, what I want to do is to put this on mono. Input controls the input level of the dry signal that goes in here. This is then output by a dry and wet mix. In effect, if I wanted to use this only as a send on my auxiliary, which I'm not doing right now because I want you to hear the effects really pronounced. I'll switch this on, which sends it to the wet. And this allows me to mix the wet and the dry. I can also pan the dry and pan the wet. We have the left and the right feedbacks. This allows us to have more of the delay on the left and more of the delay on the right or less. This selects our delay times and because I've got it on mono it defaults to left and in effect left will control the same values for right. This pans the left to the left and the right to the right but you can change that. This is simply a selection from the old analog tape to what they call stretch. Fab filter have made this quite funky in that the stretch function means that we can now have a delay that doesn't alter in pitch. Let me leave it on tape for now. We then have two sets of filters here. We can control those in series, so we can feed one into the other. We can also select what we want for each filter. So on filter one, I can select any of these. And filter two, I can select any of these. I can control the usual things like pan, uh, filter peak values, and so on and so on. Or I can move them in unison as a pair, or I can disengage them and use them separately. It's completely down to you how you want to operate. We can have different filters for one. So I can, for example, have, let's see, clean one here, a tube there. I can have a low pass there and a high pass here. I can switch one off. I can have these in parallel or I can have it per channel. These two sections are what's important. Delay left cross feedback simply means we feed some of the delay from the left channel to the right. And the same applies for delay right cross feedback. This allows us to make some really creative stereo effects. Okay, now that we've got this sorted out, the only other thing I'd like to cover is the selection of delays here. You can have default, which defaults to stereo delay, which is what we will use. Or you can select any of the other ones you want, mono, long stereo, etc. If you don't want to sync the channel, you can work with delay values. You can link the two, so left will control right's delay value. Or you can have it in sync mode. So we have all the way from quarters to sixteenths, dots, etc., etc. And again, this is customizable. We can have all manner of things happen here. We're finally left with our modulation source. And I can add modulators to anything I want. I can have this modulator control anything I want there. It really doesn't matter. It's up to me how I want to play this. But we will leave that alone for now. Okay, so what's a delay unit? Well, a delay is probably the simplest of all effects. It is the equivalent of, or a buffer. In other words, 
when a sound is made and it enters the delay unit, it goes into, think of it this way, as a temporary buffer, a holding place. You then determine when you want to release the audio, where you want to release it to, and how you want it to behave. These delay times from the left and the right are determined by these two. One handles the time and the other one handles the offset. If we have it in sync mode, one behaves against the other. So let's say I select one of these values. It doesn't matter if it's a whole note, quarter note or whatever. I can also have a delay offset against that according to whatever we set. So for argument's sake, let's say I select 16. This in effect means that there'll be 16 repeats for every bar. But think of it as 16 repeats per bar. Just think of it like that. 32 is 32 echoes or repeats per bar, and so on and so on. T is triplets, dots are dotted. So we now know that the delay enters here, enters left and right, we tell it when to start spewing out all these repeats, and then we tell it to offset against that. In, in effect, this acts as a very fine tuning tool. And this is synced to the host's BPM. If I take this out, we're now only in millisecond mode. And if I don't use the lock icon here, I can have different left and right delay values. So let's just play this. I've put them both to play the same delay value. All the delays are going to the left. All the delays are going to the right. Now these two are at the same value. What happens when I change the value of one? It becomes rhythmic. Now let's look at the, take the feedbacks out and put this on stretch. Now you can hear left channel playing on the left with all the delays right playing on the right and the pitch of those echoes has not altered let me bring the dry signal down so you can hear more of this now i can start to cross feed one against the other so you could hear my left starting to creep into the right and right into left Okay, now let's get into the filters. Let me switch this interactive off. Actually, let's have them in parallel. But if I have them in series, this filter feeds into this. So the sound enters here and then there. Let's do that. This is great for creating these weird morphing effects. hear that starting to get really funky now one other thing you can do with almost all of these delay units is to have a tap tempo function but for now let's just stick to our 30 milliseconds so that you can hear the effect
So delays are not just there for delaying something and having this sort of temporary buffer vibe thing happening. They're there for creative effects. And I'll show you how we can start to create some really crazy things when we start to using things like envelopes and modulators. <laughs> 